Okay, today we're going to talk about the Avanine IFD series connecting with ForeFlight. This is an updated version with the uh, new version 12.4 of ForeFlight and how to transfer flight plans both from ForeFlight to the IFD like you typically would. Uh, created your flight plan at home on your ForeFlight, you go out to the airplane, turn on the IFD, and you push the flight plan into the panel mounted IFD. And we can also if we edit the flight plan on the IFD, we can push it back to the ForeFlight on our iPad. So let's show you that. So here's a sample flight plan from uh, White Plains, New York, HPN, to CMK, to Bosox Intersection, and on to KBED, which is Hanscom Field in Bedford, Mass. So we've created that on ForeFlight at home in the comfort of our home, and now we're going to go out to the airplane. Once we get out to the airplane, we're going to turn on the avionics master. It knows we're at White Plains, as you see here. One of the things we want to do is make sure that Wi-Fi is connected. Once you, If you've connected it once, it'll remember. In my case, I've uh, named my Wi-Fi C172 AVI11. So I go out to my iPad and it makes sure that it connects as well. The default is LEO Wi-Fi, so typically this would say LEO Wi-Fi, L-I-O Wi-Fi. And here's the password, A, B, C, D, E, F, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's 10 digits. And again, once you've made that connection, just like at home, when you turn on your iPad, it always recognizes your home Wi-Fi. When you go out to the airplane, it will recognize your IFD Wi-Fi, and they will sync up. You can edit the name in maintenance mode as I've done here, but normally it would just be Leo Wi-Fi. Okay, we're sitting on the ground at HPN. and We want to push this flight plan from ForeFlight into the IFD. So we're going to go to the Root tab here. So I'm on the FMS page. I want to go to Root. I touch that. And you can see there's no stored routes in here, but I'm going to now go over to my ForeFlight. And I'm going to touch this kind of upload transfer button, whatever they call it here. When I touch it, I get a submenu, a send to menu. And from that, I will push panel. And when I push that button, notice it says it's sending the flight plan. It's going to transfer on Wi-Fi over to my IFD. It takes a few seconds. Boom, there it is. Notice it says it's ready to upload. And here it is. I can highlight it. And then I can activate that root. So I'll activate. And now it takes me back to my flight plan page. Here's my flight plan on the right. Here's my map. And now I'm going to activate the flight plan. First I activated the root. Now I'm going to activate the flight plan. There I go. And now it has CMK as my active waypoint. It, the Panamount IFD will then send position information via Wi-Fi back to ForeFlight and an indication that that is happening is when you get the little blue airplane here that lets you know that it's receiving position information. Okay, one of the things that's really cool is the ability to show ForeFlight and the IFD100 at the same time on your iPad. Of course, the IFD100, if I come over here and just go back to my iPad, I've got an IFD100 app which I can launch. Let me hit start. Okay, let me sync up, and now you've got your flight plan. And if I hit the little side tab here, I've got my map. I'm going to pinch zoom out so I can see my entire flight. There we go, right? So one of the things that's cool is uh, ForeFlight has supported multitasking since its previous release. The new IFD100 app now supports multitasking as well. So I can either have ForeFlight open and launch IFD100, or I can have IFD100 open like I have here. It'll be hard to tell because I you can't see my hand, but I'm going to drag up from the bottom and, and get the menu like you see there. So I just drug up my finger from the bottom and it shows a list of all the recently used apps. And of course there's ForeFlight. Now I'm going to 
put my finger on it and drag it out over to the side, either the left side or the right side, and it will split screen for me. So I'm going to touch and hold that four flight icon and drag it over. And notice how I end up with a split screen. And if I center it up, the IFD 100 and 4 Flight will show up on the same iPad, and they're both being updated simultaneously. So that's really a nice, cool new feature. And I can control the IFD 100 or the panel mounted IFD right from my iPad. I can still do that. I can, uh, you know, change pages. I can look at synthetic vision. Bring up a map at the same time as my Synviz, which is pretty cool. Back to map, I can look at the in-trail Synviz. If I'm on Synviz page, I'll actually see the in-trail and the first-person synthetic vision on the same screen. And then I've always got my four flight here. I can turn off this flight plan, get a bigger map select the different charts. Here's an IFR chart. I can select a section or whatever. You get the idea. All right. So, so now we're running IFD 100 along with 4Flight. Very cool feature. And this only works in a landscape mode. It's currently set up so you want your iPad in landscape and you can have the IFD 100 on the left or the right. All right, so now we've uh, we've uploaded a flight plan from the IFD up to four flight here. Now what I want to do, let's say we want to edit the flight plan, and we're going to edit it on the IFD. So if I go over to the FMS, I'll even edit it right on the uh, on the iPad, on the IFD. Instead of going to Bosox, we should, they want us to go to uh, the Putnam VOR first. So I'm going to insert that right here. And I'm going to type in P U and it nominates Putnam. So I hit enter to activate that. So now Putnam VOR is our active waypoint and we're going to fly there. If I go back to the map, let's go to the map page. If I can sight, if I just touch right here or I can hit the enter button, I can change the map orientation. There we go. Now we're in north up just, just to match the uh, four flight. But now you can see I'm, I'm deviating. I'm going to Putnam first. But notice the four flight has not updated yet because it doesn't automatically sync. On one hand, that's good because you can do some what if stuff. But uh, I want the I want my uh, four flight to match my IFD, which you see here. Let me zoom out here. There you go. And I've made an edit on the IFD, so now I want that to be reflected on four flight. So I'm going to push the IFD flight plan to four flight this time. So what I'm going to do is come over here to devices, and you'll see under my devices I have an IFD. Uh, there's the root, and notice it has Putnam in it. So I'm going to just touch anywhere there and highlight that. And now it's, it pushes that flight plan back to four flight. And notice Putnam is, uh, the Putnam VOR is there. And they match. So now that's one way of pushing it back and forth. Uh, one of the things that might happen is, uh, let's say we're cruising along and all of a sudden they say, okay, you're clear direct Bedford. So I'm going to highlight Bedford here on my IFD and hit direct to and enter, activate. So now I'm going direct to Bedford. Well, notice I, it is, again, didn't update here. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to touch Bedford right here on my on my four flight and just hit direct to and now they're both flying the same way so it's a really cool feature having the split screen 
you get a lot of versatility and flexibility. Obviously, your panel-mounted IFD, especially if it's like a 440, this is giving you a much bigger screen, and you've got access and real-time updating of four flight and IFD 100 at the same time. All right, and that's how you connect the IFD with ForeFlight and run IFD 100 at the same time. Fly safe, everybody, and have a great day.